Hello everybody, this is me, Maria Grossbaum from Abyssima and I wanted to ask you how everybody is doing, what is going on. Isn't it like some kind of a strange movie? Sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, am I dreaming? What's going on? I, uh, am I in this uh, Black Mirror episode or something? This is crazy. Less than a month ago, I've been enjoying Caribbean Sea with my daughter. We were running on the warm, white, sand, sanded beach. And um, now we're here, isolated. <laughs> What's going on? I can't believe this is happening. Well, I'm probably more lucky than other people, people because I still get to feel a little bit of uh, life. Let me show you what I see from my balcony. <clears throat> it is getting darker, but... I hope that you could still see what I see and what I see I see some light in windows of my neighbors okay and I can see downtown of Toronto even it's totally empty well not totally some people are still outside uh, I can still uh, see some cars going but I get the feel that uh, there is life going on. I'm not completely isolated. I can hear some birds. Anyway, so um, what I was going to tell you is that even it seems like everything is falling apart, even, even it feels like it's a total ap apocalypse, we are creative people have something that helps us to keep sane, happy, and creative. Exactly, we have our art, we have our art to do. And now we have some time for it, even more time. Time that we didn't even uh, expect uh, to have. But now we have it, and we have no excuse not to create. And as promised, uh, I created for you a free tutorial, which uh, with, um, technique that I called corn. So take a look. I used uh, some uh, jute uh, burlap uh, ribbon and modeling paste and I've created this really cool texture. Here's another example of this. Now um, I know a lot of you asked me about uh, this uh, tutorial and uh, I'm super happy that I finally put it together for you. And I promise I'm going to create more and more content, free content uh, with tips and uh, inspiration to keep you busy, to keep you sane, to keep you happy and creative, okay? So let's spread creative joy instead of virus and um, wash your hands, keep safe, Keep busy and uh, we are all in it and uh, therefore we have to unite and uh, make art helping us in these uh, dramatic times okay so I'm, I'm here with you Maria from Abissima and I forgot to tell you something I want uh, my other classes to be uh, ac accessible for you come on my come and say hello uh, <laughs> So, um, therefore, this is Maya. If you still don't know her, she's my daughter. Anyway, so um, I want my classes to be um, affordable for you. Therefore, uh, all of them are going with 50% off. Just uh, put, um, um, what was the coupon code? Ah, super sale, super sale 50. One word, lowercase, super sale 50 to get 50% off, okay? Again, stay safe. I love you. We love you. And let's create and uh, live a happier isolation. Okay, doc. Let's take a closer look again at corn uh, effect. I promise you it's really easy to create. But if your first attempt is not going to look like my work, don't worry. Don't get discouraged. I'm sure you will master it. And uh, with uh, with the time it will look much better. Now as you can see I've already started my new canvas and now let's talk about materials. You will need modeling paste. Any brand is working. I'm using my favorite Liquitex light modeling paste. You will also need a pair of scissors, 
palette knife and a jute burlap ribbon. Now, if you don't have it, no worries. You can use any cheesecloth. It may be not going to be exactly like my example, but the effect will still be the same. Corn effect looks really nice on bigger canvases, but for the learning purposes, I suggest to use small scale. My canvas is 9 by 12 inches, so go for something similar. And once you feel confident, you could repeat same effect on bigger scale and it will look absolutely awesome. So now let me explain to you what I'm doing. I'm cutting off the edge, the stitch at the edge, because I want to be able to take out some threads. Also, for more interesting effect, I want to break it and wrinkle it. And um, it will allow me to create uh, more interesting shapes of uh, so-called uh, corns. If you like your jute net as is, you don't need to take threads out, but I prefer to avoid symmetry and um, to bring a little bit of dissonance in my work because it creates more uh, interesting effect. Also the threads that I'm taking out, I'm going to use in texture. I'm going to add it uh, to my composition for more uh, integrity. I will show you this later. And now I want to distort my piece of fabric even more for more interesting look. And I want to find a best placement for it on my canvas. So I want it to be kind of like a continuation of the existing piece. Although I think it's a little bit too big, so I'm cutting off a smaller piece, which I will use in a different area of the canvas. And yes, I think that uh, that's great uh, it looks good and I'm ready uh, for the next uh, step and for the next step um, before we push out uh, the uh, modeling paste through the threads and this is how we create corn let's apply some modeling paste on the surface of the canvas it will be kind of like a glue a glue that will fix piece of fabric on uh, on canvas. Consistency of modeling paste that I'm using is similar to uh, whipped cream and uh, in order to create corn effect it's necessary to push out this whipped cream through the fabric. It's easier to do with fingers so take some amount of uh, modeling paste and then gently slide your fingers and push uh, push this mass through the threads. Your aim is to achieve an effect uh, of corn in the central part of uh, your piece of fabric and the edges should be blended with modeling paste on the surface. Et voilà, now I have a very good idea about where I'm going because I see that my composition is almost completed and my aim is to add the uh, last touches because uh, modeling paste is still wet and I can play around and uh, maybe emphasize certain peaks and another thing that I want to do is to add modeling paste at the edge of the fabric and uh, fix it this way on on the canvas. Remember I mentioned that I want to keep threads and uh, I want to add them to my composition so this is a good time to do so. I still have an empty area where I want to use uh, this uh, small piece of fabric that I cut off earlier and also apply corn effect on it. So I'm just making sure that the edges of the um, fabric are all fixed on the surface with modeling paste and now when I'm looking at the whole um, 
uh, canvas again. I understand there is no need to add a more corn effect. I think we have enough. And in order uh, to make, uh, to create an integral look, I'm adding some threads that I took out uh, earlier. And uh, also um, it adds a lot to my composition with threads. I can create an additional texture and also add an interesting movement. As you can see, there is a specific flow that goes uh, from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. And uh, yes, I'm quite satisfied uh, with what I just built. And as you've noticed, it didn't take me uh, too, uh, too long. It was really quick. And uh, uh, my only suggestion is that when you are adding objects on your canvas, just make sure that there is enough modeling paste underneath so that it can uh, be fixed uh, very firmly on the surface. I'm very happy with my composition and I'm not going to touch it anymore because I don't want to ruin it and now it's ready to dry and I will continue uh, painting it in the morning. Well, good morning everybody. It's a new day and I'm ready to continue playing. Now, playing with colors is my favorite part because it's so unpredictable and sometimes it's difficult to control. But I love the challenge. I hope you love it too. Now, in terms of paints, I am not suggesting to use different, a lot of different colors. I'm going to use only three or maybe four. Neon orange, um, dark blue, dark metal brown and maybe olive green. I'm not sure about green, but maybe. I'm also using different uh, sizes uh, for brushes, regular ones and um, flat ones. And of course, you will need water. So are you ready? Let's do it. I totally forgot to mention what type of paints I'm using. I'm using uh, acrylic paints, but if you don't have acrylic paints or if you don't have this particular uh, colors, not to worry. I'm giving you a full freedom as long as you are using water based colors. It could be acrylic inks, acrylic inks, uh, gouache, tempera and uh, watercolors. So you have quite a big range. And um, I would suggest though to have a challenge and work with only three, maximum four colors. You will be amazed how much you can achieve with uh, only few paints. My idea is very simple. All the highest peaks of the corn I want to paint with neon orange. And uh, I want this orange to blend nicely into dark brown and dark blue. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I assume it might be very interesting. I love playing with colors and uh, I love using fluorescent and neon paints because they make my paintings very vivid, very lively. So this is my little uh, tip for you. If you want to brighten up uh, your uh, artwork, add not too much, but a little bit, a little bit of fluorescent or neon paints. You will see how suddenly your artwork starts breathing or talking. I don't know. I find it absolutely fascinating. Another cool thing that I would like to point out is that, uh, look, I'm using only one color, but with one color, my painting already looks completed. It happens because uh, this color reveals all the school texture that I built earlier. So texture and one color sometimes is enough uh, to create completed look. But knowing myself, I cannot be satisfied with only one color. So now it's time to introduce another one and it'll be uh, metallic brown. 
Well, my idea is quite simple. I don't want to make it too complicated because uh, we have very intricate texture and I don't want to overload it with uh, too much colors. So I want to keep brown at the bottom part of the painting that blends um, with blue and blue will be mostly on the upper part of the painting. Now, when you apply colors, use a lot of water and help colors to travel on the surface and blend with the texture and uh, with each other. You might be interested uh, what, uh, what exact colors I'm using. No worries, I'm going to put in the description uh, all the names of all the colors and all the materials that I'm using. Now, um, as you probably noticed, I, uh, I'm not using any uh, super uh, sophisticated and expensive stuff. I'm using Americana brand, which is very, very cheap. I think um, one bottle costs like a dollar and a half. So um, with this, I just want to say that you don't need anything super expensive in order to achieve beautiful results. Simple materials, cheap materials can do a really good job. Well, I like what I'm doing. Now I just want to achieve more uh, smooth blending between colors and uh, make more contrast. So what is dark to make even darker what is light to keep it light and uh, blend a little bit more uh, blue and brown because I really like how they both work together and now ladies and gentlemen I want to show you how I emphasize threads how I put a dark accent on them I think it's important to do because this will make our corns so-called corns more visible. I don't want to apply uh, this effect everywhere but on some areas and it will create interesting effect. So um, make sure that your orange, if you use orange, is dry and then choose one of the darkest colors that you already used in your painting. In my case I choose uh, dark blue I dilute it with a lot of water and then I just apply it straight with thin brush straight to some threads. So what happens is uh, density of the modeling paste and uh, threads is different. So um, threads absorbing more uh, water and more tones. So and that helps somehow to keep the corn that is made out of modeling paste stay clean but uh, threads absorbing this humidity with, uh, uh, with the colorful tone and it stays there but you need to apply some water as well to help color to travel It's a subtle effect, but I think it adds a lot because then you can see uh, corn as cells, as separate cells. And I think that's what creates more curiosity uh, and more interest in your texture. All right, I'm almost done with my experiment. It's a lot of fun. I'm not going to use green. I don't see a uh, reason because I have so many interesting uh, colorful blending going on. So right now I just want to make dark even darker and um, create more contrast so that my orange parts are standing out even more. Sometimes it's really helpful to change angles uh, of your canvas and let colors drip freely. 
and at this point I want to put my painting aside, let it completely dry and then with a fresh look uh, to see what else needs to be retouched. Well, of course, colors look a bit different after they dry. And um, as a last touch, I want to emphasize certain areas with uh, orange. I really like the area with the fabric and I want to make it more visible. The best way to do it is uh, to use a flat brush, medium size, to hold the brush on the angle and use orange without water, just a pure pigment and touch the surface slightly. I want to touch the surface very, very lightly and only uh, the most sticking out parts without getting inside to the lowest spots. Well, now everything is dried and I think I should stop now because I have uh, a crazy wild uh, bouquet of all kind of uh, textures and colors and I don't want to overdo it. But in order uh, to make my work totally complete, yes, I want to color the sides. The best way to do so is uh, with a flat brush and with any colors that is already on your painting. Darker color is a better choice. This is my subjective opinion. So I'm going to use metal brown and I just apply a lot of pigment without water. Maybe I will have uh, to add a couple of coats. I almost always apply paints on the sides of the canvas because this way painting looks complete and uh, you can hang it without any frame. And uh, of course you can add frame if you feel like it, but it's not a mandatory. Now take a look, the work is done and it only has three pigments, three colors. Isn't it amazing how much could be achieved with only three pigments and uh, of course look at this corny texture how wonderful is this well i hope this experience was interesting and uh, uh, you learned a lot and of course you got new inspiration now i filmed um, the the last stages of uh, of this process in uh, in the evening when I didn't have natural natural light. Now I'm showing you how this work looks in the daylight. Well, thank you for experiencing this with me together. I promise to create more free videos for you. That was Maria from Abyssima and happy creating. <music>